Hello, and welcome to the Gaia update for the Mars retrograde that is happening September 9th through November 13th, 2020. I'm Adrian Elise. Well, this Mars retrograde is very potent coming on the heels of the Venus retrograde, Mercury retrograde eclipse season that all happened together in May and June of this year. And so 2020 is like retrograde season because Mars went into its retrograde shadow on July 25th, just before Venus came out and Mercury came out of their retrograde shadow. So let's talk this through because Mars is at home in Aries for this retrograde, meaning that it will spend like, let's see, um, six, seven months in Aries this year a lot of time at home and maybe this is a message for us uh cleaning up our home life mars wants action change and let's go let's do something in aries it's about the change that needs to happen to be who we really are with chiron in aries we've got this intense energy around the wounds of where we haven't been able to be who we really are Aries has an energy of the life force, of the true existence, the I am, and grabbing a hold of this. This is a really important energy for our time because if you're not paying attention and you're not being conscious right now, you are being sucked deeper and deeper into the lower matrix, into the artificial intelligence control mechanism, and uh, losing your soul and individuality. So this Mars retrograde is really important because it's giving us the fight we need to claim our sense of self as human, living, organic creatures. <laughs> and it's also because this Mars makes three squares to Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and Capricorn. It's about the changes that need to happen in the structures of our world to support that living being, to support that inspired true living experience um and so because you know the whole 2020 energy is saturn pluto jupiter in 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 capricorn the end degrees of capricorn doing their dance and and this the end degrees of capricorn is like the structures that need to break down pluto the destroyer saturn the builder the rules the laws and jupiter expansion trying to bring light and more and um so expanding our possibilities of breaking down but see this is the deal you know we're coming to this place in our evolution where we're realizing that so much of our whole life our whole existence our history our financial system our education system our political system based on total and complete lies you know, and so this end degrees of Capricorn, Pluto, Jupiter, uh, you know, energies, Saturn coming in and out of Capricorn Aquarius is all about you guys. We can't, we can't, these structures cannot support us in the new age, in the new energy, in the next chapter. And so Mars coming into the mix in this retrograde is just pushing the envelope because Mars is our male planet it's our action planet it's a daily planet fast moving planet and it's about how so you know a lot of times these bigger planets going out there doing their thing we don't really feel it it's some it's out there in the background but when our personal planets are interacting with these planets that's when we feel it so this is go time uh starting at the end of july 2020 when mars goes into that retro went into that retro, retrograde shadow now that happened at 15 degrees Aries. So that means that Mars will be retrograding back. It starts its retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. So almost at the end there, very interesting because that's right where Saturn is, you know, as it turns and um, then retrograding back to 15 degrees. So let's kind of talk this through because what this means is, you know, so basically, just a quick note, if you have any cardinal signs in your chart, you want to check this out because between 15 degrees and 27 degrees, so the cardinal signs and into the fixed signs are getting massively tr tr triggered 
this year and for this Mars retrograde, and you want to pay attention to that. Where are the degrees that you have your stuff in the second part of cardinal signs, which is Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn? Because the other deal that's happening is that um, Venus is in Cancer for the beginning of this Mars retrograde energy squaring up with Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and then uh, Venus will be in Libra for the second, the last part of this um, retrograde and also then again squaring up. Mercury takes a retrograde in Libra and so that means that Mercury will be squaring up with these planets as well. So it's like all hands on deck, our personal planets interacting with this incredible pressure you know there's a lot of pressure to you know the jupiter energy mars energy brings pressure um and it's all about pressure to change what's no longer serving us and pressure to change the actual physical structures of our world so this is personally our life our relationships our home our um our structures of our thoughts and beliefs you know big big on the table here and um then in the structures of our world that needs to change in order for us to for humanity to evolve you know we're just at this breaking point we're at 2020 is about uh seeing the truth of the lies that our whole world's been based on and kind of being like humanity are you going forward are you going to stay here are you going to become artificial intelligent robots with your soul stolen and living out this feeding some lower matrix agendas, right? I think that if humanity really understood how much they're feeding the devil right now, you know, it's just one way to put it, uh, they would be quite disgusted. And that maybe that's what this Mars retrograde is about, you know, like, because how do you change structures that you don't even know are destructive? And you got to see them, right? And that's the energy of Jupiter. Jupiter brings light and expansion and it's like amplification of whatever it comes into contact with, in this case, Pluto. So that's kind of the energy of um, sandwiching this whole Mars retrograde experience is the Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions. So the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction happens three times in 2020. We've already had two of them. First one was March and April. Ooh, kind of an intense time, huh? And um, that it was at 24 degrees with both of the planets direct. Then the second one is was June into July. And that was at 24 degrees as well, both retrograde. Now the third and final hit of these, and this is a good message for the whole Mars retrograde too. The third and final hit of the transits when we have this retrograde, they go over three times. The third and final time is when you get the message. It's when it makes sense. It's when you get the blessing potentially, <laughs> you know? Um, and so the third and final Jupiter-Pluto square is like, ah, you know, uh, what is this whole 2020? What are we really doing in 2020? And that is November. And for the whole month of November, we'll feel it. It's right around the second, third week of November that that happens exact, but we'll feel it the whole month at 22 degrees. Now, 22 is a master builder number. It's about building a new world. So that's a powerful message for us. And again, both of these planets direct. Now, a lot, some of the mystery around this Jupiter-Pluto, of course, Pluto's breaking down the destroyer. It's dismantling what's not working. It's ego death. It's breaking down all the faults, which is a really good thing. It just doesn't feel that great while it's happening. But... An interesting thing is like this Jupiter Pluto, these first two hits, it was very, it was underneath the surface of all the craziness and the intensity of our world right now. Um, living a lie every day. Basically, we're all being forced to live a lie every day. Um, and, but this is all a reaction to the light that's coming in. So the Jupiter Pluto in the truth of this Jupiter Pluto is a, is a massive spiritual activation. You know, maybe the Pluto breakdown is really about cracking that lower matrix so the light can come in. And this this control energy, um, like pressure, limitation energy of the Capricorn is 
you know, but it, like the 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 agenda that's coming forward with all of this lockdown control energy is actually a reaction to the light coming in, right? So it's a really important energy for key eyes are, you know, keep your eye on the price of what's really trying to happen here. And in it's like those times when the Jupiter Pluto conjunction happened, it's like so much opportunity for spiritual expansion. And yet there's this hold, you know, and that, but that, that hold is artificial and the light coming in is organic and it's always going to be stronger. You can hold it back for a little while. Right. But, um, and that's this Mars. Mars is, Mars is very important energy. It's where, how we make change, you know, Mars in your birth chart is where you want to see change. And, um, so Mars coming into the square is very powerful message, you know, and, and it's pushing us up against this wall. And it's not comfortable, but it's like we're never, ever going to find comfort again until we break through to a new paradigm. It's going to get more and more uncomfortable for you until you let go of those structures that aren't serving you. Your conceptual ideas, the relationships, the the situations, you know. Whew, so it's intense, you know, just studying through this Mars um, transits and the transits that are happening through the rest of 2020. It's like, whoa. I mean, we are in such an intense time and it's like, well, okay, just breathe. You know, sometimes you just get that, but it's also like pay attention because this is monumental, epic shit happening right now. And you're going to look back and be like, I lived in that time and tell my grandchildren about it, you know? So, um, let's kind of talk this through. It all starts in August. August is where the very first hit of the three so mars is going to square jupiter square pluto and square saturn three times and um so the very first square with all three of these planets happens in august so it's like squeeze and um uh and and pressure coming up against the wall because these squares are this like something's gotta give and you can't keep going where you're going you know, so it's like squares in the birth chart is what we use to make shifts in our whole incarnation of who we are in this lifetime. They're very important and um, but not that fun a lot of times, but we need them. And so the first week of August, Mars square uh, squared up with Jupiter. Mid-August, Mars square Pluto. That's right when the Leo new moon happens. So this is saying, hey, you guys, this isn't about like the struggle and the ego death. And, and it is, but it's really about us being who we really are and shining our light here. Starting to live again, claiming back our life force and our permission to exist as healthy humans in a healthy world. So Leo new moon, because Mercury, the sun and the moon are all together for that new moon in trying to Mars. You know, so it's like, you guys, this is about the light. This is about the truth. This is about our full expression of who we are, you know, and that's why I see in the supernova soul astrology charts again and again, it's like, yeah, you want to, you have a lot on your plate. You'll have a lot of, you want to, you know, clear all these other lifetimes and stuff. But what you really want, what you really came for isn't karma clearing. It's for your full expression of who you are. And you can't be released and feel like you're complete in your earth karma until you can fully be the star you are. And it's like from the moment you got to earth, you were kind of beaten down on that level for the most part and had to kind of work it. You know, this is the energy of Aries. It's like when you couldn't be who you really are, you know, for the supernova soul, this Chiron and Aries is like lifetime after lifetime where you had to pretend you were something different, not as bright, not spiritual, not an alchemist, not a herbalist, not, a, you know, like in order to stay alive, you know? And it's like, now we have to go from lifetimes of compensating and hiding in order to stay alive into full expression all in one lifetime, right? So that means a big part of your lifetime. You got to undo all these other lifetimes. And Mars is saying, come on, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it or not do it. Live or die. We're running out of options. There's this black and white timeline divergent thing happening. And we don't get to do a little bit, we, you know, the spiritual path over the last decade or so has been about oh, a little of this a little of that right and it's like we can't do that anymore 
You got to either choose the full expression of who you are and that path of your spiritual destiny, or just, you know, you can be the inorganic artificial intelligent robot if you want to, you know, it's, it's a free will world. And, um, but this is what this tension is about, you know, choosing life. And so, um, then Mars comes into its very first square with Saturn at the last week of August. So August is like, bam, bam, bam. First week, Jupiter. So middle is uh, Pluto and the last. So it's like, okay, this is, it's kind of like lining up what we're doing here in this Mars retrograde and what we're doing here in 2020. Um, and there's an energy around this Mars retrograde because Mars is our masculine planet and it's such intense tension with the personality constructs that Pluto break down the ego death. And the opportunity for us here though is a brand new relationship to the masculine, a brand new masculine, an enlightened masculine, the divine masculine landing home in our lives. You know, there's all this work and talk about clearing up and healing the feminine, but you know, and this is a really important energy for our time because the agenda of control wants to take us out of gender. And I really wish people could see the, the deeper program in that because computers don't have gender, right? And gender, the masculine energies, the feminine energies, and the alchemical marriage that happens, that's how we get out of duality consciousness and into our heart consciousness. So the agenda to take away gender is very dangerous for us. And we've got to this, maybe this is part of the Mars. It's like the divine masculine, the warrior, the spiritual warrior, being activated within us to land home because the divine masculine is about holding and protecting a sacred space for the creative feminine to flourish, the life force to flourish, you know, and um, to, to protect, to stand up for what's right and good and true and to hold uh, a sacred, um, sacred space for the alchemical marriage, you know, and um, so that's a really important energy for us and to kind of because the masculine we've been demasculated you know it's like the masculine we've been told and programmed that the masculine is aggression i mean look at mars has a bad name it's all about aggression and fighting and anger and all that and it's like there's so much more to the picture you know and it's like oh well male that's what male is you know and it's like no it's not and we all have masculine and feminine within us. And working with these energies is how we get into the heart consciousness. There's been a long-term agenda to separate out our consciousness, masculine, feminine, um, and not be able to use these energies together, right? Like not be able to intuitively think and and intellectually think at the same time. And um that is a long-term agenda to keep us out of our heart consciousness. Our heart is an organ of oneness and it's got conscious cells, just like our brain, right? And this is, maybe this is the Mars retrograde. If we really want to run with it, it's activation of, you know, coming back into these archetypes of the strength of the feminine, the healthy feminine and exalted feminine and masculine um, and a very deliberate opportunity if we would like to take it to come into our heart consciousness. So, um, you know, so Venus uh, is in Cancer for this month of August and that means that um, it will, it actually squares Chiron right at that new moon in Leo uh, when Mars is square Pluto. Um, and then it will go on in Cancer. Since it's in Cancer, that's the, um, you know, cardinal sign. And it will square Jupiter and Pluto at the end of August. So whoo, August is just like, okay, laundry list, right? Like, oh, okay, here's what's the ego breakdown. Here's personality breakdown. Here's the, here's the, the stuff that's not working. And this is what this Mars retrograde is going to be about for you. So pay attention to the energies of August. And then right at the beginning of September, there's a full moon in Pisces. And um, that is um, a shift of energy. And it's interesting because in the very first week of September, what happens is that 
Mars comes into a square with Venus, right? So Venus and Cancer trying to figure out how to receive um, and um, and to heal the grief and the wounds of the feminine in, in that square to Chiron. Of course, Mars was is with Black Moon Lilith for that first square with Pluto, very intense, um, saying that the reason why the structures haven't been able to adjust and change and break down is because of lies, secrets, distortions, shadow, shame, you know? And so this is coming up. So when Mars squares up with Venus, it's like they're both in these cardinal signs are squaring up. It's like Venus has had that intense retrograde and um, still figuring out who in the heck she is and, um, and that square is kind of like um, bringing this to a head. There's maybe some in energies coming forward, like we said, that that August uh, into September is like your laundry list. You know, so Mars square Venus might bring up some a little bit more for your laundry list of what you're cleaning up with your Mars retrograde. Um, now, Mars doesn't even ha come into retrograde until the 9th of September. And all this is happening, right? So that's why it's so crucial to kind of pay attention to that list of things that's coming up to be resolved. So you kind of are like, oh, this is what I'm dealing with. So you can pray, be present and conscious as much as possible. You know, when energies are intense, we want to just go hide under a rock and we can do, you know, that's appropriate at <laughs> moments, but we want to just be like, whoa, this is because if you're really paying attention, it's like you're a different person at the end of 2020, you know, and that's a healthier person, a better person. It's like uh, more true to who you are and um, therefore you can get on that more appropriate path and destiny. So September, um, it, you know, Mercury is going to go in. Mercury takes a retrograde uh, when it, it goes. It's Ill, it's in Libra for September, and then at the at the twenty third of September, it heads it heads into its retrograde shadow at twenty five degrees Libra, and um, so that because it's ret it'll its retrograde will cover those last degrees of Libra, which is a cardinal sign, that's also going to be squaring up with all of the Capricorn energy. So just Mercury in the mix, right? Like Mercury was a retrograde was a huge part of the Venus retrograde. And now it's a huge part of the Mars retrograde as well. And um, so Mercury will be, you know, just before it goes into its retrograde shadow in mid September, the third, so the second part of September, Mercury squares uh, Jupiter mid-September, squares Pluto the third week of September, and squares Saturn. So it's Mercury's turn to square all these. And Mercury is about our conceptual reality making sense. So that that last couple of weeks of September is a really important time to get situated in your conceptual reality of what this Mars retrograde is about for you. Don't sleep through this one, right? This is awakening. We got to pay attention. And that's what that second part of September is about. Um, and then in October, um, is when we will have the second hit of the Mars squares. So um, the Mars square Saturn happens first um, because now it's taking a retrograde. So now it's going backwards, you know, and so it's going to square Saturn again at the end of September into October. So that's an intense, like second part of September into October. It's like, ooh, here we go. Here we go. We're going to retrograde back into these places. And um, there's a full moon in Aries on the October 1st. So that's a big shift of energy also because it's like a full moon brings culmination. It brings a kind of like reflection, you know? And so it's like, what is this Aries energy about? What is this Mars energy about? What's the higher octave of what we're trying to do here? Um, and then Mars will square up with Pluto for the second time in the second week of August and square up with Jupiter for the second time in the third week of, excuse me, October. I think I said August. Um, and so we've got early October square Saturn, uh, mid-October 
our second week of October square Pluto, mid to third week square um, Jupiter. So we've got that, that's the next bloom. So August is the first, like, what are we doing? What's going on? Laundry list. October's like, we're in it. And this is what's going on. Um, and so very potent and powerful time. Now the sun will be in Libra. And so that means that the sun will also, so we've got Mercury, Venus at the beginning and the end squaring up with these planets and Mercury in the retrograde. And then as it's heading into the retrograde, really, and, um, and then we've got the sun doing it too. So the sun squares Jupiter at the same time. Second week of October squares Pluto, the middle of October squares Saturn, the third week. So we're going to have, um, the sun opposite Mars and um, them both. So a cardinal T-square as they both square up with these planets. Um, we're looking at, I mean, literally the end of September through the third week of October. So just October in general, we've got, you know, sun square, the Capricorn planets and Mars square, the Capricorn planets. Um, then there's a new moon on the 23rd of October. And um, so that is um, the new moon in Libra. And um, so that will also be interacting because that happens at 23 degrees. So that's right in the area of Jupiter and Pluto. And so it's like the new moon will be uh, squaring up with these two, right? So the sun and the moon. Um, and um, so very powerful. That's right at the middle of October. And uh, so October is just like, ooh, you know, um, the full moon. Oh, and then just add to it that Halloween, <laughs> there's a full moon in Taurus um, on Halloween. On the 31st, um, there's a full moon and so uh, that's a culmination energy, right? Like Mars is retrograde. It's gone back through its second time of crossing these planets. This culmination energy. Taurus, uh, now that full moon will be in conjunction to Uranus. And so um, that's really interesting because the whole thing started with the Mars retrograde um, well, with the, the new moon in Leo in August, that was right when Uranus turned retrograde. And so this full moon on Halloween will be conjunct Uranus. So it's speaking to um, the new, this is about trying to like a, an infusion of all of the breakdown isn't just for the breakdown. It's because the new energy is coming in, a new relationship to physical form, a new relationship to earth. You know, like this is the deal. Like we've been, our the lower matrix realities have wanted to keep us completely identified with physical form, that we are our body, you know, we live, we die, that's it. And um, uh, materialism and, you know, in the Uranus and Taurus is saying, hey, you guys, the Aquarian age is about a different relationship to form. It's about infusing form with spirit. And, you know, as you go through your spiritual awakening, you feel, you know, there's heavy times, <laughs> of course, but, you know, you feel lighter and lighter, like recognizing that, like, life doesn't have to feel like you're dragging a body around, along. It can be, uh, the energies can support you in the new paradigm, you know, and that's kind of an energy of this full moon on Halloween, right before the elections, very intense energy. And it's kind of like, but this, it's kind of like ding, 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 ding. This is not about the wreckage. It's about what's trying to come in, you know? And so um, we talked about that Mercury taking a retrograde and it takes, it's it, the Mercury retrograde in Lib starting in Libra going into Scorpio is starts on October 13th and then through 11-3 which is the US elections. And so, wow, Mercury turning direct on that day. And so um, while that, that full moon on Halloween is 
um, going to be during the, the Mercury retrograde in Libra. Now, Mercury retrograde in Libra is our conceptual reality around relationships. Uh, Libra wants harmony and justice. So it, it's an energy for justice, but it's also an energy around breaking our authority contracts uh, to the lower matrix and the authority, you know, the energies of control. Because um, Libra has a tendency to overcompensate, like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll, make it work for you, you know, and, and they want to, they want harmony so bad, you know, that they'll compensate who they are. And that's how it's kind of related to the Aries energy, you know? And so this Mercury retrograde is going to be a challenge to the relationships where you have compensated who you are in order to make other people happy or keep the peace, right? Libra wants a peace and harmony. Libra also wants justice though, you know? And this is all about justice. This is all about spiritual justice trying to land on the planet. This whole thing, you know, because we've got people running our world that are working outside of the karmic laws and we're just getting hammered. You know, those of us who, who are too far along in our spiritual evolution to choose whether we want to work in the laws of karma. And um, it's about time for some spiritual justice to land on the planet, right? where the dark, evil, nasty scum is not in charge anymore. No, no more, right? So maybe that's an energy. This is this Mars retrograde coming up against these Capricorn energies. It's just like, it's really about taking down the control structure. But then what are we going to replace it with? And that's the question. That's where we need this divine masculine activation and the sense of self, right? This empowered human self like i'm gonna live i am not going to be a robot in your world and uh so really powerful and then so that like i said mercury retrograde from 13th of october to the 11th of november and um it will go into scorpio then back into libra and be in libra and so right when it comes out of its retrograde when it turns direct bef right before it turns direct and right after it turns direct is when it squares up with saturn and um so that will happen the very beginning of november mercury square saturn uh the first and second and then again on the fifth and seventh right so it like squares saturn turns direct and then comes into another square with saturn so just a the first week of November is just like super power packed with um, changing the conception or challenging our, our mental conceptions around relationship. And maybe this is our relationship to authority with all this Capricorn stuff, you know, and our relationship to our true self with Mars and Aries. So very powerful. But so know that Mercury comes out of its retrograde shadow on the 19th, 20th of November. So getting into the holiday season, that's when this is going to start to shift and resolve. Um, as far as like once that Mercury comes out of shadow, it'll be like, okay, whoa, I think I might make it through 2020, right? You know, um, but again, it's like, try not to slog through so much like because it's like this is an epic epic time and it's weird because it feels like these squares and retrogrades make it feel like nothing's happening but actually we need the squares and retrogrades to adjust to the massive changes that are happening and um so that's october and so we have that uh you know the mercury retrograde and squaring saturn and um that you know the mars square pluto and jupiter saturn pluto and jupiter and um in all happening in october so you know august is the precursor make your list october's like we're doing it we're breaking it down um and then there again that new moon at the middle of the month in libra uh that's like just right after mercury turns retrograde and then a full moon on Halloween. And so then moving into November, Mercury, like we said, will turn direct and hit the Saturn for the first week of November. The second week of November is when we have the third and final Jupiter conjunct Pluto. So interesting because, you know, Mercury's 
uh, turn direct, but not out of shadow yet. And this Jupiter Pluto all month of November will feel it. Um, and we actually feel it from mid October into the end of November. So it's like this six week period of time, which is very dynamic because we have six weeks of Jupiter Pluto, we got a Mercury retrograde, and we got Mars squaring it all. Um, and then uh, Mars turns direct November 13th. So that's an interesting energy, right? And this intensity, this culmination, and then Mars turns direct on the 13th, Mercury comes out of shadow on the 20th, and it's like, oh, whew. did we make it through um, the worst of it, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, Venus, is going to be in Libra at that time. So then it comes back into those squares. And that's exactly in August, the end of August, Venus in Cancer made squares with these planets. And then in November, around the middle of the month, the third week, the middle to the third week, the second half of November, right when Mar you know Mercury's coming out of retrograde, Venus squares Pluto in the middle of the month, squares Jupiter on the 16th, squares Saturn on the 19th, 20th, right when Mercury's coming out of that shadow. So that's going to be a crucial energy of like, oh, this, this, that's what we're doing here. That's, that's what we're doing here. Like this, it's, it's kind of like all of these vectors of energy coming together and trying to resolve and um then there's a new moon on the 15th of november in scorpio and that is going to be that's like very much that time of like maybe it's like this new chapter like oh i can see the end of 2020 and that it's not going to be like this forever we're not going to have three major planets at the end of Capricorn with all of our personal planets squaring them forever. It's just a tunnel we're going through, but it's an incredibly powerful awakening opportunity. Ego death opportunity. Come into who you really are. Start to live. This is about you living in zest, life force on your path, supported, thriving. I know it's hard to imagine right now, but that's what this is about. That's this Mars and Aries energy. It's like, oh, I want to live. Mars is impatient and it wants to fight. And this is the divine masculine. This mass, this new relationship to the masculine is a different way to fight as we move forward. You know, and how do you fight without fighting? You know, how do you claim so much of your personal strength and power that you don't have to engage in the battle? It just bounces off, right? So these are some of the deeper mysteries we'll be exploring, you know, keep up with updates throughout this, these next few months as we go through this process together. Um, there's a full moon at the end of November uh, in Gemini. So that's interesting because it's like reflecting back almost to this whole beginning where it was like the Venus retrograde, you know, like Mars went into retrograde shadow before Venus came out of retrograde shadow. So it's like this overlap. And so at the end of November, it's kind of like a full full circle type of energy. And again, um, maybe, maybe making sense and clarity in the bigger picture of what's coming, which means for August, September, and October, and, and the first part of November, you might not have any idea what's going on. And that's okay. Because sometimes when you know, we're in the biggest shifts and the biggest changes, that's when we're most confused and most lost. Um, but it's shifting for the better. We're moving into the light. We're moving into the Aquarian age. Everything. I know the lower matrix wants to argue with us and hold back the reins, but it's like everything in the cosmic world, galaxy, true history. We know it's about moving forward into an enlightened, more enlightened humanity. And that's what we're trying to do here. So December's powerful. It's almost like, whoa, okay, because there is a total solar eclipse that happens on the 14th at 23 degrees Sagittarius, not far from the galactic center. And this is destiny. You know, eclipses are always about timelines, destiny. And um, so that middle December, it's like, it's it's got that energy of that ringing of the bell, you know, and like tuning the timelines, plucking the string, being like, hey, this is, you know, come into resonance with who you really are. That Mars retrograde was about you being who you really are. Get the F over all those painful past lives and start to freaking live. 
you know? And that's a big thing I see in these supernova charts too. It's like, oh, this is a big part of your lifetime to undo all these other lifetimes that you couldn't really work with because the energies weren't right on the planet. And now you can finally, and you got a gun, you know, it was like undoing all this, but then so you can start living, living, truly living. And I think, I feel like in this lockdown and this period of time we're in right now, it feels like, what does that even mean? You know, like, what is, what is she even talking about? Like, I don't, I don't know what that even means, you know? Uh, and that maybe that's, you know, if you grab this Mars retrograde by the horns and be like, I'm bringing life force back into my life. I'm bringing thriving. I'm not going to just survive. I'm going to freaking thrive, you know, and pull, get, be the chariot behind your, you know, you be the chariot <laughs> to, 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 to be the one driving your train and drive in to the sun. <laughs> so, um, very potent. We got that total solar eclipse in Sagittarius and, um, then Saturn right after that moves into Aquarius and Saturn will not be back in Capricorn. You know, this cycle it's gone, it's done. And it's like, that's a big shift. It's like, you guys step over. This is about a new age, a new way, a new way of building a new paradigm, new structures, and like step over. And so that's the 17th of December. Um, now the sun and Mercury are together right at the beginning of this whole thing in the mid-August, sun and Mercury are together in trine to Mars. And then sun and Mercury come together at the end of December. Or I mean, you know, the third week of December coming into um, the Christmas energy. It's like, sun and mercury it's like hey what was this all about what just happened to us right so that's when we can really get a conceptual picture because they come together on the galactic center the the when august when they come together the south node is on the galactic center so then we're going to have a total solar eclipse on the galactic center and then we're going to have the sun and mercury conjunction on the galactic center and all of this is saying hey you're here for a bigger purpose I know it's been like elusive and you didn't believe me, but it's landing. So for the supernova soul, it's like December, January, 2020, 2021 is about uh, that destiny and the de your destiny activating is really about landing home your bigger self, you know, soul retrieval coming home into your life, you know. And we've had so many lifetimes of being disconnected. That's this Chiron and Aries of disconnected from who we are, that we don't even know who we are. And we got to meet this person. And this, this bigger self has a very different set of needs than our lower self and the way we've been living our life. It has a, it needs a completely different structure. So we got to make this time work for us because it's such a radical shift to like a false you that's been almost like a placeholder. And this is why you're flailing around, you know? And um, if, if you have a hard time, like most supernova souls of holding your psychic boundaries, uh, you know, being overwhelmed by the feelings and emotions of the collective and other people, one of the factors in that is not being whole and home. You know, when you're home, you get your soul retrieval and you're landing, it's way easier to hold your space and uh, hold, you know, protect yourself. Your light is its own protection. So now here we get to the last part where of December and into January when the third Mars squares to the Capricorn planet happens. So the only one that happens in December is Mars square Pluto because the other Saturn, this is so epic. It's like people, a lot of people say, oh, well, we're not to the Aquarian age. We still have like 400 years or whatever. And it's like, do you feel, do you feel the shift? And look at the stars because in December, this whole dance at the end of Capricorn, right? And then Saturn and Jupiter together in conjunction move from Capricorn to Aquarius, you know? And it's like, so if that's not saying we're trying to move into the Aquarian age, I don't know what is. And then it's not until 2024 that Pluto moves into Aquarius. So that's really where we're like, boom, but we're, you know, we're in it. And it's time to wake up to this and to be present you know, and live this truth. Maybe this is supernova soul. It's like, you guys, like stop being into, it's like the depression and the emptiness and the loneliness is a denial of your path and purpose and what we're doing here. 
And this is all you came for. From the very first lifetime you came to earth, you were here for this. And so the emptiness and the loss inside that you feel is you're missing this. You're missing your bigger self. You're missing your path and purpose. You don't feel like you deserve it. You've been deliberately disconnected by these um, authoritarian control-based relationships that you didn't even know because that's all you know for lifetimes. That's maybe that Libra energy and coming into this, you know, tension, um, breaking those authority contracts that play out in our personal relationships. So Mars square Pluto happens at the 21st or the 23rd. So, you know, basically that Christmas energy, solstice, Christmas, it's like Mars square Pluto, third and final time. And it's kind of a culmination of this whole Mars retrograde, but a culmination of the whole 2020 astrology because Saturn and Jupiter are like, we're out of here. We've had enough of the on degrees of Capricorn. Like we'll be back later, but you know. Um, and so it's not until January that Mars, it's actually, let's see, Mars, um, Mars will square up with Saturn in mid January and then square Jupiter at the end of January. Um, or, you know, those two around that time, I, maybe I mix those up, but yeah, no, no, that makes sense. So, um, so the mid to end January is when this all completes and the third and final square of Mars into these with with these planets. But now they're in Aquarius and Mars will be in Taurus. So it's a fixed energy and the fixed energy is about trying to stabilize and, you know, like in a new vibration so that's pretty powerful. And um, there's a full moon lunar eclipse, partial lunar eclipse, but get this, in Cancer. Remember, we had those two um, two new moons in Cancer. And now we have a lunar eclipse, full moon in Cancer. So this is saying we're not quite done with the messages and the lessons of the North Node in Cancer, South Node in Capricorn. And isn't that powerful? Because it's like, oh, one more lunar eclipse in Capricorn or Cancer. You're not getting out of this one. And But it's right when those planets have already moved over to Aquarius. So it's like the end. There's such an end book chapter here happening at the end of 2020. You can't make this shit up. And so that's on the 29th of December. A full moon at eight degrees Cancer lunar eclipse and partial lunar eclipse, but a very powerful because that total solar eclipse right by the galactic center, it's about these eclipses are, it's like this all started last year, 2019, when Venus and Jupiter went over the galactic center. And it's like this, we're trying to do a divine timeline alignment. And, um, and all this whole year 2020 is about, are you going to choose that? You know, are you on the light ship or are you off the light ship? Because there's no in between. And so that's a very powerful culmination. And then get this, Mars comes out of retrograde shadow on January 1st. You know, so we've got Saturn, you know, December, we got Saturn, Jupiter, boom, moving over into Aquarius. And then, you know, that total solar eclipse on the galactic center. And then Mars coming out of retrograde shadow. But it won't do the third and final square until, you know, January of Jupiter and Saturn. And so January will be kind of like, you know, January is always like that a little bit. Like it's like, you know, you're reorienting to this new new year. And so the whole month of January is going to be kind of calibrating. Um, and it's like I'm kind of seeing 2021 is a platform coming in of a new potential new reality and um and the whole month of january is about like stepping making that step you know and as you make that step you got to make sure all the stuff's dialed that you know you got your shit organized <laughs> you know so it can't crop up and pull you back down right and it's just like that adjustment of what it means to take it to the next level so I hope you can really take advantage of this Mars retrograde energy and fight for your life, your permission to exist as a spiritual being in a body, living consciousness, the biggest threat to the control matrix. <laughs> and that's why you've been so targeted for so long. And it's like game over. We're not playing this anymore. We're going to be who we really are. And this, this is this incarnation of our divine masculine, a new relationship to the fight, a new way to fight. And it's like, how, 
what kind of weapons are going to hurt a big Buddha of in on fire, a flaming Buddha, like, you know, light being? What kind of weapon is going to hurt that? What kind of uh, rules or laws or control energy, you know, that's been beating you down for lifetimes is going to affect that? And it's time to step in, you know? And here we are, we're doing it together. So thank you so much for being with me, um, being a part of the Supernova Soul Tribe. So important to support this work, this movement. Um, just it's my devotion, dedication to uh, help support these souls in coming into who they are and finding each other. So thanks so much for being with me. And I look forward to seeing you soon. I'm Adrienne Elise. Namaste.